Everybody, the AOS 7 is done. It's been built. It's been flown. It's been tested. This thing is amazing. Super lightweight. It's definitely a floater. You can even do freestyle with this as well. Man, like I've never had a 7 inch, so I can't compare this to anything else. But for my first 7 inch, I'm very happy with this build here. Okay, so this is just the post wrap up first, and then we'll have the build log next. If you're impatient, I'll put a timestamp somewhere so you can jump ahead if you want to. I'm not going to go into all the details or the theory of why I did what I did post build, all of that great stuff. So look forward for another video for that. But let's just talk about the build as it is in general, okay? So you have some tips, tricks, pointers, things ahead of time before you watch the build log. So as far as assembly, everything went together pretty straightforward it's um, like no issues whatsoever I did have to file out a couple of the channels here where the camera mount is and on one of the arms so if you don't have like a super small file on hand you might want to have one just in case uh, maybe I got unlucky with some of the CNCing but I mean I could have wiggled it and it just been a little, little bit too much work so um, I happen to have a cheap set from Walmart it's like a seven dollar set it was enough to fit in between these slots right here file out just a micro millimeter and get things to settle in a little bit better so Assembly overall, pretty easy, pretty straightforward. I mentioned this in the video. Uh, when you mount the motors to the motor plates here, there is no up top and bottom or left and right per se. You can mount it to either side, but do keep in mind that what side you mount it on, the motor wires will, will lean to one side or another. So you'll probably want your motor wires going to the inside of the arm on both sides so that you can get to the pads. All right, so just keep that in mind as you're doing it so that you have two that go to one side and two to the other. That way when you do the assembly here. So I had to go back and change that on one. So I got lucky. Um, aside from that, everything else went together really good. Um, I did go with the um, the antennas here in the center. So I did have to buy some, I bought 70 millimeter uh, UFL to SMA uh, extensions. Okay, 70 millimeter, the minimum, 100 would be nice. You'd have a little bit of extra slack. 120 eh, might be a little bit over, but it teach their own. Now, every time you take off the top plate, you are gonna have to remove these connectors so that you can get underneath. So that is a little bit of a pain in the butt. But other than that, everything uh, went good. As far as the O3 camera in the front, okay, you wanna have the two holes facing the front for an O3 camera. If you're using like a DJI camera, you can have them facing the other way because it's inset a little bit more. So I had to switch that out at a later point in time. Um, you might wanna have some additional uh, M3 screws on hand. I happen to have some left over from other um, drones that made it easy on me, um, but there was definitely some stuff that needed to be done. Uh, as far as the motor uh, screws right here, okay? So the motor screws, uh, that come with the motor are going to be way too long because you're using a thinner plate here because of the style of the build that's right here. Um, but they are included with some shorter screws from AOS themselves. It was a little bit tight um, and really close to the windings. There was enough clearance at first, but what I did is I created a little X pattern like this on the inside here, kind of like a little riser, a spacer to kill that gap. I didn't want to go through and grind down 16 screws. It just made more sense to put like a two millimeter or a one and a half millimeter piece of TPU in there, right? Okay, so that's not in the original video, but I'm telling you here after the fact that if you want to do that, that's a great way to kill the gap so that the screws are just in the motor housing, but not up into the windings themselves. All the TPU, I will make a master pack on Thingverse so you can get everything. So I made a bumper for the front and the rear on these pieces right here. And then I made an X brace underneath. So this one is actually a little bit shorter. So this is five millimeters top and bottom. And I made this one like four millimeters. So you can you know scale it up or down. But for me, it just made sense that if I'm gonna constantly be landing and it's kind of abrupt sometimes, why would I want the impact to be right underneath my stack, right? So I made this one a little bit shorter just in case I have to land. I don't scratch up the bottom of the plate, but 
it's not constantly taking the impact right under the stack. That's just me being a little bit like OCD. Um, I have a TPU mount right down here if you want this as well. This has a Maytech uh, G10 or whatever the newest one is up top. It's nice and flat. That's how they recommend it with the GPS Mate backpack on the backside here. Great. Um, what else do I have to say about this that I'm not thinking of? Oh yeah, right back here. So this thing was kind of dumb and this is something I cut out. Check this out, hold on, let me zoom in. So back here on the top plate, they usually etch in the AOS. Okay, that's in here. So I ended up cutting out the prongs for the S, right, so that I could run the battery lead out of here. And then I made this little TPU print, like a gasket if you want to call it that, or I don't know, a bong <laughs> or something. Yeah, that fits in there. So it looks way cleaner, okay? Because it doesn't make sense that you have battery straps one, two, and three, and that if you fish the line out of here, if you pull the lead out of this which i did initially then you can't use this battery strap right here because the wire is coming out of it right it doesn't make sense and i didn't want to run the wire out the back so i just cut the parts out of the s ran this up in here and now that works now on that note okay so let's talk some batteries right because most likely you're going to be flying some 21 700s or some 18 650s whether you build them or buy them yourself okay if you're going to fly 18 650s they will actually fit perfectly in between the antennas here Okay, however, if you're gonna be flying 21 700s, they do not fit in between here. So you need to stack them up vertically. And you also need to keep in mind that you're gonna lose a little bit of space because of the battery strap itself. So it doesn't matter to me if I'm flying it vertical, I would like to have it a little bit flatter personally so I can get more surface area from the battery strap on here, right? But if you wanna fly 21 700s, a single pack, you're gonna to have to stack them like this, right? But um, I did do some flights already with two packs, and it was a mix of 21700 and 18650, two 18650s, right? I'm getting some pretty good flight time, okay? Uh, that is another video, so stay tuned for that. But you're definitely going to want all three straps if you're going to fly two packs, right? Because you're going to need to set this back a little bit. You're going to want to strap this one in, a little bit of a strap over here. So you're going to want to get some, not only 350 millimeters is what you want, okay? 350 millimeter strap is what you want if you're going to go up and over in a standing position like this for the 21700s. If you get them laying on the side, a 250 I think is what I have. One of my other ones, you can check the 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 links down below for exactly what I bought. That is enough to go over if it's laying sideways and no issues standing up or sideways, right? If you're using the 18650 packs, okay? Um, so that is just something to consider. Like I said, it is kind of weird. If you take the top plate off, you're gonna have to remove these SMA connectors. So if that's inconvenient to you, or for you, you might wanna rear mount them in the very back, something to consider, um, but supposedly keeping it here in the center changes or reduces the amount of vibration because of the moment arm, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, right, batteries, good, yes, <laughs> and lots of straps. So last little bits and pieces, I made a cool little TPU holder here for the O3 air unit, if you're gonna be using that. The image quality of the O3 air unit with V2 goggles, is amazing. Yeah, there's definitely some things that you have to do as far as upgrading your goggles. And if you're not already done that, it's kind of a pain in the ass, but I'll put the links down below for like a Bardwell video or anything else that I came, um, that I had any issues with. Uh, seven inch props, okay? Seven inch props. I bought a set of seven and a halfs because it says it can fly seven and a halfs, but the props were actually clipping each other in the center there. So I wrote Chris Rosser to ask him how it's possible to fly seven and a half inch props. Haven't heard back from him yet, but if you do seven and a half inch props, man, it is gonna be real tight on the battery tray. You're probably gonna have to fly everything vertical, get those uh, straps real tight, because uh, it's, 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 it's almost too close for comfort. I'll probably just end up sticking with seven inch props from here on out, but this is kind of holding this in place too, which is actually really nice. But at the end of the day, I'm really loving this quad so far. I'm super excited to see what kind of long range we're gonna get. Like I said, subscribe for the other videos that I'm gonna talk a little bit more about this and some of my long range flights, GPS testing and all that other great stuff to make sure that this thing just doesn't crash and never come back after spending five, $700 on it. You know what I'm saying? So subscribe, comment, like, Onto the build log. What's up everybody? Today we're gonna to be building a complete seven inch FPV drone. I'm very excited for this. This is gonna be my first seven inch quad. I really wanna get into some super long range. I've been trying to push my five inch Nazgul and I've been getting some pretty good range and flight times. So we're gonna build this one up today. So we are building the AOS Ultralight 7 right here. And we're gonna talk about all the parts in just a second. There is gonna be some interesting bits and pieces to this build here. It's not gonna be 100% plug and play, easy to go. And the reason for that is I got a really good deal on this O3 air unit, which I wasn't expecting to install in this, but I'm still on the 
V2 goggles. So we have to do some special updates to this and updates to that to get all of the things to mesh together because this is newer technology with older goggles, blah, 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 right? So let's get right into it. So we've got this frame over here. This is the Ultralight 7 by AOS or Chris Rosser. Okay, so this one is gonna be slightly different than your standard quad, right? It's gonna have a lot thinner carbon fiber and obviously I sprung for some colored carbon fiber. I love blue, so this is gonna be my thing over here. And with the arms, we're gonna do the whole assembly and everything anyways, but these have vertical arms or a vertical truss system, which increases the strength, yes, but lowers the weight and is also supposed to reduce the amount of resonance. So we should be able to fly uber smooth without any issues, so they say. I got some cool blue standoffs with this as well. So we're gonna be using the DJI 03 Air unit. I was hoping that this could be my standalone camera so I don't have to run a GoPro. So I got a really good deal on this, so I decided to spring for it. Hopefully that doesn't bite me in the ass in the end because I really don't wanna have to use a GoPro. But if this doesn't work, then I'll take this out and put it into maybe like a small Cinewhoop. I do have a Runcam Wasp uh, Air unit type of deal that I can use with this. So we are going to upgrade the antennas right here. Okay, so I'm gonna take this. I got these UFLs right here. These are 70 millimeter, I believe. Yes, uh, and so we're gonna take this. These are RP SMA, so it has the pen sticking out. Okay, and I'm gonna attach this one on each side because there are hard mount points right here on the left and right side that we're gonna be able to attach the antennas to. Okay, so we got two of those. I think 70 millimeters is gonna be the sweet spot. And for those antennas here, I'm gonna have some 150 millimeters. Yes, uh, these are gonna be the Ospreys. So I'm gonna try these out because uh, they sound to be about the same as getting the iFlight ones. So I've got these so we can do that as well. Now, the only thing we're gonna have to change here, right, this is kind of a known issue, is that the pigtail that comes off of the O3 unit is not plug and play to most of the standard flight controllers. So probably what I'm gonna have to do is de-pin this right here and then put it onto a different pin if I have one in, um, uh, in my possession. If not, I'm gonna have to solder this directly to the flight controller, hopefully not. But Air, O3 air unit, and then we're gonna look at some TPU stuff at the very end for everything as well. Now for the stack, we're gonna be doing SpeedyB, but this is the F4, not the F7. I wanted to save a few bucks. These are like 60 bucks right now. Most people have good reviews about these, right? And it's got 50 amp per ESC. I'm, this is a long range quad. I'm not doing any crazy freestyle or racing, but if we open up the box, yeah, this thing looks pretty awesome on the inside. We have tons of pads we can solder to if we want to. Yeah, but we also have the Bluetooth that is built in, which is super convenient when you're tuning and doing different things in the field, which is one of the main reasons why I got this stack right here. Uh, all of my other quads have the Speedy B Bluetooth dongles, but they have one built in here. So this thing is pretty amazing looking right here. I'm really excited for this. Yeah, so we're gonna look at soldering. Hopefully my soldering skills are on point today, <laughs> but we'll see, don't judge me. Now let's talk about motors. This thing is huge. It is amazing. It looks awesome here. This is the Brother Hobby Avenger series. This is a 2808 with a 1350 KV, which is recommended for long range efficiency, especially at 6S. Yeah, so this line, the Avenger line, seems to get really good reviews across the board. So I felt confident with getting this motor right here. Then we're looking at a receiver here. I do ELRS. I have a Radio Master Zora, which I upgraded to about a year ago. I love that thing. Solid connection, no dropouts, perfect. So I went with their diversity style receiver, which has two antennas. So you can have one to the front and back, or in this case, we might be pushing them out the sides of the quad to the left and right. We're gonna figure that out here. So we'll be able to solder that in, match that up too. I'm gonna try and find a connector so I don't have to hardwire it directly to the flight controller. So I have a little unpluggy, cause that's always convenient to have as well. Now, if you're flying long range, you need a GPS. That's just a must. So I did splurge here. M10 is all the rage right now. So I got the Matex S M10Q right here. We are gonna have to do some additional setup and programming on the back end. Bardwell has videos on that, but I'll put the links to it. I'll try and cover it the best that I can here. Um, but if you're going to have GPS, even though the M10s are supposed to get locks even faster, I always recommend getting a GPS mate right here, which is what I have on my Nazgul. Okay, so it's the ViFly GPS mate, or you could call it a backpack, right? And basically what it is, is it's a two-in-one. You're probably going to want a buzzer on your drone, but this has a buzzer, but it's also going to pre-power the GPS so that it can start to get those locks while you're getting things set up. So these things are super convenient, right? You turn it on, blah, blah, blah. It powers up the GPS. It allows it to get locks while you're adding the battery or doing whatever your pre-flight checks might be. But then also this will keep the GPS powered in between battery swaps. It operates as a beeper. And in the event that you eject the battery, 
it'll still beep and make noise for you too. So it's kind of like the regular beeper that they have, but this has got like a three in one killer combo. So I highly recommend this. Uh, I'm gonna show you the TPU mounts on how I'm gonna mount this as well, because I have something over here, but we'll look at that here in just a second. Now for props, we got the HQ seven and a half inch props. These things are huge, obviously. I'm going from a five inch to a seven and a half inch prop. So of course it's gonna look bigger. I'm excited to see what these are gonna sound like, but you know, a prop is a prop. Then I had to get some longer battery straps because I'm going to be using lithium ions and there's a lot of space. So nothing to report here. If I like them or hate them, I'll let you know at a later point in time. But let's talk about the battery. I just built this one yesterday. I build my own lithium ion batteries. So we're going to be doing a 6S1P. Yes, these are the Molacell P42s. Okay, so these have uh, 4,200 milliamps, I believe, and they can output 45 amp if I'm re remembering right here. So if you can build a drone, you can build a battery. It's not that hard. Um, I have videos on how to do this if you wanna see, but you can save a good few bucks if you do it yourself, right? And this looks pretty nice. I like using clear uh, shrink wrap because then I can see inside the battery if there's any issues and kind of like diagnose without having to take the shrink, shrink wrap off. So to each their own, but if you like colors, they have definitely color shrink wrap out there too. And this is just one of a few that I've got to build right now. I've also got some Samsung 40Ts that I'm going to build. So right off the bat, I'll have two packs to start. And then I get to decide if I want to build some out of 18650s or what do I want to do? But there will probably be a 6S2P in the works here sooner than later. Last, let's talk some TPU mounts. Okay, a lot of these are on Thingiverse. They will definitely be on my channel. So these are the motor mount bumper guards. Okay, so Chris Rosser has one that's directly linked. Somebody remixed it and I kind of changed it a little bit. So if you look at the way the motors work, okay or the motor mounts themselves you have these two pieces yeah and the mount and the motor is going to mount to this piece and then there's going to be a little gap in between so they come up with the idea of having the bottom plate that has a hole in it so you can still access the the uh, screws if you need to the problem with that was that the original piece was a solid piece of tpu and you would actually block the two holes that you needed to so somebody else remixed and cut it out right and these will slide inside here real nice and easy and then what i did is i added a few more millimeters of tpu on the bottom so that you have something to land on. I don't know if that's going to be good or bad yet because I haven't even assembled the frame yet, but to soon, soon to be seen. Then I have a makeshift GPS unit holder here for the back side. This is just a test piece. This definitely fits the Matex Sys. And typically what it looks like is like this. So the GPS goes up top. It attaches to the GPS mate, which goes down below right here, right? And then that connects to the flight controller here. So this is something that I built a while back from my Nazgul, super convenient. And then I've got a bottom little strap you do here so that you can put a zip tie all the way up and around so that nothing comes loose. I promise that you're gonna want it. The last thing that I remix that I'm very proud of and this thing looks awesome okay this is going to be a holder for the air unit for the o3 okay i remixed this from somebody else but now this is perfect yeah it's going to line up with the base plate right here it's going to match right up to the holes here and the best part of all is you can use either the 2020 or the 25 by 25 holes and it'll screw right into the tpu itself holding it nice and firm. And then if you're really you know, scared about it, you could probably put a zip tie all the way around through as well. But we'll look at that towards the end. Let's get to building. Started with some basic assembly, the silicone mat coming in clutch here for staying nice and organized, got everything separated. But let's actually address the first concern <laughs> before we even get started. We haven't even assembled anything. We already got problems? Yeah, kind of, sort of, okay. So because this is an ultra light frame, super thin carbon fiber, not like the standard five, six, seven millimeter thick stuff for your freestyle quads. And because of that, the bolts that come with the motors, if you put them through and do a little test fit first, you'll notice that they would definitely touch the housing and the windings. So the uh, nuts and bolts that come with it, right, are not gonna be usable, at least for the attaching this. Luckily, I counted this, okay, so for each motor with the top and bottom, you're gonna need six because there's a top and bottom, which is 24 total just for the motor mounts, okay? Uh, so over here, I counted and I separated everything. There seems to be enough extra. These are like M3, I'm gonna say six millimeters, but I went through, I tested it. This is the perfect length. So you're gonna come through and attach this to the bottom here. I'm gonna use a little bit of Loctite because I wanna be safe. So that's gonna be the first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start to attach all the motors to these pieces right here. And then I'm gonna make sure that each bolt is nice, snug, not too tight, but how I would expect it to be if I was gonna attach a motor to it. And then I want to make sure everything spins freely, right? I can see in there, plenty of clearance, nothing going to scratch the windings or touch it or anything like that. Let's do that three more times. All right, so Brandon from the future here when it comes to assembling the motors to the plates. So you notice how 
for each motor on each arm that the wires are actually to the inside of the truss, which is great because that all leads towards the ESC. Now, when you go to assemble, right, the truss arms or the motor plate, they're all pretty symmetrical. There's not really a top or a bottom or a left or a right per se, right, because they're symmetrical. However, with this piece right here, depending on what side you mount it on, the wires will be either to the left or to the right side. So I really got lucky with three out of the four that I could get them all to go in towards the inside. So just make a little conscious decision there, like, Otherwise, you'll have one that's like outside like this, if this makes sense, right? So it'd have to cross over to get to the inside. Okay, so just a little food for thought right there that there may be an actual top and bottom depending on which side you're putting it on so that the, all the wires lead to the inner part of the inside of the arm where your ESC is gonna be located. So just like that, we're done with all four here, a little Loctite on each one. They all spin real nice and free. So we're gonna move on the next piece of the motor. So now we've got these TPU motor guards here that I've got. Like I said, I gave them just a few extra millimeters on the bottom of beef. So it kind of has like a little bit of a landing pad that's uh, raised, but not like obnoxious. So it'll just open up to the side. You're gonna take this piece, slide it in, open it up, get it into one corner, slide it down, and it'll snap right into the second corner right there. So we're gonna do that on all four of these right here, put it into piece. And then you're gonna take the short standoffs yeah, and these are gonna press right inside of the TPU. You can see it's right there. Press it down like this. And then that way we'll be able to screw a screw underneath and then one on top once we put the motor on top just like this. All right, so we've got all four of these done here. So you can see there just a little bit closer. Yeah, it's in there, pressed in press the short standoffs in, and now there's a nice little hole in here. I oversized the hole on the thicker part, so that way the head of the screw would easily fit in there and it would drop in. So that's all you gotta do is just take this, get it to fall in there. Come on, fat fingers, right? <laughs> and then take that, and that'll screw right into the standoff. Okay, so now that's what we're gonna do. We're just gonna screw this into all of the bottoms and then we'll move to the next step. Next thing, I'm gonna take the third standoff here that just gets attached right here, one screw underneath, and one on top when we close it all up. It's starting to come together. So now what we can do is we can start to put the motors on. You can see if you rest it in here, it's gonna rest on top and in the groove perfectly. So all we have to do is start to add the truss pieces here. Yes, one to the left, one to the right, and then we can close it up and start to put those final screws in. So now we're gonna put the arms in and then close it up with the motor on top. So I think it is important to take the arm, kind of test fit it because the tolerance is really tight on some of these, which is great, right, for the top and the bottom, but just to kind of loosen it up and make sure that it goes in easily, not only on the bottom plate, but on the top plate so that when you do sandwich it, it's sliding into place nice and easy. There really isn't a definitive top or bottom on these as far as I can see because I've been looking at the design here, so I think it's pretty symmetrical, yes? But you can see this one goes in a lot easier than the other side did, right? The tolerances are real tight. Then you come over here with this piece, and right, you're gonna close it up, you gotta try and get it all lined up just right. Then you can start to press down and get it in there, right? And I'm actually fidgeting with it. This is real, it's gonna happen for you too. It's not just like a one and done perfect, but this piece slides in here perfectly. This piece is setting up in here real nice, right? I can kind of pinch on it. And this part over here is in friddly secure. You can't see it underneath the wires. So now what I can do is I can take the screw and kind of get it started so it doesn't open and then carefully tighten the screw on all three sides. And now this final screw up here, I'm gonna to start to tighten this down nice and gently. I don't wanna crack anything. Just make sure everything's closing down nice and equally, right? Come back, view, make sure everything's seating just the way it needs to be. And if I need to level it out just a little bit on the left and right, I can do that and then tighten it the rest of the way. So arm number two went together a lot easier. I don't know if that was just a fluke, but let's try two more times and see what happens. So all four arms are done now. I think they look amazing. Number three and four went together just as easy as number two, so maybe it was just a fluke, but everything's mated nice and flush here. Same thing on the top. You just have to take my word for it for the one that's hidden under the phase wires, but everything else nested in real nice. I think this blue looks great. Looks awesome with this blue TPU. I'm really excited for this. So next step, uh, onto the base plate here. Okay, so we're just gonna put the rest of the standoffs in so everything's up and then we can start putting in the electronics. And I will be using some Loctite on all these bottom screws here because I noticed that they tend to fall out over time or maybe the person who made my previous drones did not do a good job, but you know, vibrations happen. So all standoffs in and an accounted for here. We got 10 total front to back. 
And I think it's kind of nice that they include some extra ones. So I have an extra one for here, an extra one for the motors, right? And these three, which actually two, is gonna be up here for the camera mount, which we'll get to a little bit later. Now onto the ESC and flight control. If you look at this, Speedy B has included some excessively long bolts or screws. I have no idea why, but they're taller than the actual standoff. So when I put the top plate through, it actually starts poking through. There's just an excessive amount of screw left over here. And uh, if I try to use some of these O-rings or these little donuts that they got, I mean, really, that's only like a millimeter or two. It's not going to be enough. And I definitely need these nuts right here to secure everything down. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to solder everything up right now, like get the uh, XT60 connected, get the motor wires measured and kind of mocked up and in place. So I can glaze the bottom with um, some conformal coating and then maybe I'll just have to cut the excess off with my die grinder or my Dremel or something like that. Okay, before we get started with soldering, it's always a good old game of what to do, what to do, especially with the capacitor here. So I am going to put a little flux pin over all these little pads right here. There we go. And I think what I'm going to do is take the capacitor and I'm going to shove it through these little holes right here. And then I'll flip it over and I'll put a little bit of solder down here so that'll hold it in place. And then when I'm ready, I'll come back and I'll put the leads on here like this and then I'll be able to bend it and put it on top. That'll still give me plenty of space here between the flight controller because the flight controller, if I mount it like this on top, which I probably will, yeah, there's only a port right here in the front and back. So there'll still be plenty of space for everything. All right, come be judgy, ratemypoo.com, right? I actually think these look really good. So uh, there was good flow going on here. Obviously, we haven't put the motor ones on yet, but everything looks pretty solid for once. <laughs> it gets better after three or four drones. I'm just going to do the power leads right here, and then we'll start doing the motor wires. So I like to get the wire hot first, so it's kind of a little bit hot and melty. Come back, loosen up the pad a little bit. There we go. Throw him back in on top. Melt it all together. And then if I feel like it needs just a little extra juice on top. All right, rate me, how did I do now? So I think this looks great, right? Made it all nice and hot, molten. It's not like super shiny, but it's pretty damn good. And for the power leads, yeah, I'm happy with this right here. Now we can take the capacitor, Take this and bend it back over here. And I think we're gonna be safe and good to go. All right, so we've got this loosely mocked up. So I'm gonna start measuring some motor wires, clipping them to length, yes. And then we're gonna run the wires to the inside of the arm and then they'll be held on with like a zip tie or something like that as they come in for the final bit. I wanna keep everything really loose and not locked down because I still wanna put conformal coating on the bottom side of this and then the top afterwards. So I'm gonna to need to be able to flip everything upside down to do all of that. All right, now we got all the wires trimmed down, which looks appropriate. Now I just gotta go through and tin all of the tips and then we can put them onto the board here. All right, judgment time once again. Are they all perfectly beautiful? No, but are they solid? Absolutely. And there was good liquefaction, moltenness, whatever you call it, I don't know. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna flip this over. I'm gonna glaze this with conformal coating and we'll be back for the next step. All right, so we're back. Everything's looking all nice and glossy. I gave it a nice little coat, two coats on the top and bottom. Uh, this is sticking out. This is going to be the connector from the ESC to the flight controller. So whenever you're using conformal coating, if you've got special connectors, it's always good measure to plug it in first. That way you don't conformal coat the pins and then, or, you know, have any issues with that. So you just plug that in there. So now we're going to be able to lay the flight controller on top right here. And so the port for it is underneath here. And the one on the back side here is actually going to be for the air unit itself. Now the arrow is facing forward. Yes. Um, and that's probably what's going to have to happen because it's not going to connect if I don't do it right here. But with that being said, I'm wondering if the little connector from the air unit is going to be long enough because if not, that would be an issue. So we should probably mock that up right now. I think it's probably going to be fine. So if I lay the air unit just in here roughly, yeah, this is going to go through the stack or I could go underneath and then here and then plug into the bottom. So it's probably going to go in between the ESC and the flight controller. Now for right now, I'm not gonna conformal coat this once I get done soldering everything because I always like to make sure that I got everything right. The other thing, this does have a barometer on it, which I believe is right here. If you look at the SpeedyB app, 
they have a little map that has everything outlined. So you need to be careful when you do conformal coating from what I hear, because if you co coat the barometer, then it won't work. So I need to confirm that on the forms, but also I have my SD card right here. I don't have an SD card right now. So before I come through and coat the bottom side and all the pins and everything else, I wanna make sure that I have an SD card inserted, like I said before. And if I have to put a piece of tape over the barometer or whatever it is, so that I can conformal coat this, or maybe I'll just carefully go around it. I don't know, but for now, this looks pretty good. So it looks like we can take this, we can start to add some different things. And if you remember, I said that we might have to repin this because the O3 air unit uh, has some different colors and stuff like that. We actually might have gotten lucky once again. So it is five volt is red, ground is ground, RX is white. Let me double confirm this here and put this in front of you. So right here, right if you can read this, okay? So off of the DJI, O3 air unit, white is gonna be RX, which goes to TX. Yes, it always swaps, just in case you don't know. Uh, gray off of the air unit is TX, which would go to the RX. Brown is signal, and then yellow would go for S bus. So there's a couple things that need to happen here. Okay, this is a side note. Now these pins should line up perfectly on this flight controller, and it'll plug in perfectly. Yay team. Okay, but if not, if you had to swap some of these around, you could just depin it, pull it out, put the pins back in. Now with the S bus, what it does say is that if you want to use an external receiver, which I am, which would be an ELS ELRS receiver instead of using like a DJI controller, you're you're gonna to wanna to unplug this, okay? If you plan on using, let me show you this here a little bit closer. Let me rotate it so that I can kind of see it on the screen there. So uh, at the top here, okay, R2 and T2, okay, this is all the uh, receiver channel, okay? So if you were to use, leave the S bus plugged in, and you wanted to use ELRS, they would both be fighting because of that S bus port. So you either have to clip the wire or use a different UART port. So all I'm gonna do is just deep the wire and put some heat shrink over the top, which makes more sense. And then RXTX2 is gonna be for my receiver. And we have this uh, 4V5, which means that if you plug this in with USB power, you should be able to power up your receiver without having to physically plug in a battery which is nice. So if you're doing like bench testing type of stuff, you don't need to overheat everything like that. So a lot of good news here going on. At least there's like a, a silver lining here. And then on the part down here in the bottom left, this is gonna be all of the GPS stuff right here. So it's all kind of like grouped together. That's like really nice. So that's what we're gonna do next. So I'm just gonna lay this on here. I'm not even gonna plug this in. I'm not gonna plug this in because I don't even need it. Yeah, and we're just gonna do the receiver now and the uh, GPS. So we'll work on tinning these up for the receiver and then move over to the GPS. So yellow is RX, this is gonna go on TX over here. White is TX, that goes to RX. And then red to red, black to black. So now we're on to the GPS and the GPS mate or the backpack. And this is where things might get a little bit confusing because it's got to go from here to here to back and forth. So just hear me out for a second. So if you were just going to do the GPS, it'd be pretty straightforward. You connect these wires to these wires and you call it a day. And as well, just like anything else with the receiver or the VTX, if you have an RX that goes to TX, if you have a TX, it goes to RX. There's always this crossing action, okay? Introduce the ViFly. So something has to come from the flight controller to this, to the GPS. So there's gonna be a double crossover. It's stupid, but trust me, I made the mistake the first time through. So what are we really connecting to first? I would start with this first. Okay, we're gonna start with the backpack. Now they do give you some different plugs that are right here that you can plug in and it's easier once you plug them in to see what goes where and how it connects. Okay, but on the backside, it is labeled quite nice. So the GPS is up here. So if we use this little four pinner, you're gonna have to get a couple extra wires. Let's see, how does this go in? Is it going like this side or the other side? So once you get this one plugged in, we can already use this little harness and this is gonna connect to the GPS, right? Red is a 
voltage right and then we got a green one which is tx which is gonna go to rx the white one is rx which is gonna go to tx on the gps over here okay and then there's an sc and an sd so if you have a compass okay so we have this little wire over here that is connected or will connect easily and you can plug it into either side over here like this so what i might try and do first is see if i can take these pins yeah and put them into this instead and that would be nice um and then the other two wires for the compass i'm gonna have to solder directly onto the back right here okay no big deal now keep in mind let's just make this a little more complicated one more time is i have this mount and this is probably what i'm going to use so if you're using the same thing as me right the backpack is going to be underneath and this is going to be up on top yeah so we really only need the wire that goes from the backpack to the gps to only be this long and come around the corner yeah does that make sense now out the other side is what's actually going to attach to the flight controller and they do give you this cord right here or this little plug what have you yeah and it's actually long enough and it reaches all the way i think it's going in right from back here so there is plenty of space to reach all the way from the back of the quad with more than enough because it's going to connect right here so i'm going to use the entire thing i'm not going to cut any of it but i can always just widen up a little bit or put a loop in it and then hold it down with a zip tie in case you need a visual reference, right, they've got the diagram right here. Like I said, a double crossover between the flight controller to the GPS mate to the GPS. So what we're going to actually do is just solder the wires directly from the GPS to the GPS mate here. It's going to be a lot easier than doing a four pin and then a couple pin. And it's really nice because then off the side here, I can actually read what each wire does and what the color combo and coordination is. So it's going to be really easy to line up. All right, so that side's done there. It looks decent, I guess, right? I always recommend you do like a wiggle and a kind of hard pull here just to make sure that all of your solder joints are decent enough. Uh, if they break free, then obviously you gotta redo it. And that happens to me from time to time. So now we can do the other side, which is gonna go from this to the flight controller. So this is pretty straightforward. As mentioned, once again, just line everything up. Once again, RX goes to TX. TX goes to RX, everything else lines up. And then the buzzer right here, because we get to use this as a buzzer as well, is gonna go to buzz negative. So it says on the sheet over here, we will see. So we're pretty much done. I did forget from last time that if you do have a compass that you're gonna have to add two wires right here onto the back of the backpack that goes to the flight controller. So what I'm gonna use is just two of the wires that came with this other harness that we're not using, and then we'll be good to go. All right, so now we're done with the GPS and the GPS made of the backpack right here. Not my finest work. These smaller solder pads are definitely a pain in the ass for me. I'm not sure why uh, they don't solder as easy as the motor pads but or the phase wires, but whatever. Anyways, I'll put a new piece of shrink wrap over this after I verified that everything is working, but we're pretty close. The last thing we got to do is the air unit, get that plugged in and the camera, of course, and get that set up. And then we'll be able to power everything on, make sure it works before we start really putting the pieces together. All right, so we're pretty much done and we're about ready to plug it into beta flight, set up some settings, and then I'm gonna power it up and make sure it works. Okay, so what I did between the last clip is I deep in that S-Bus wire that I don't need from the air unit. Okay, so it looks like it's right here. So it's reusable if I wanna use it at a later point in time. But since I'm using ALRS, I shouldn't need this. Plug the ESC into the flight control Yes, I ran the wires from the air unit underneath and in between the two stacks, so that keeps it nice and organized. And yes, and then I went through and checked all of my solder points with a multimeter. If you don't have one, you should. I really just go through and check continuity, which is this little um, symbol right here. So what you do is if there's a short, it'll make a beeping sound. So I always just go through and check like the neighboring soldering points, right? And make sure that no solder is connecting between these two pads, that there's no short circuits, all that stuff. I'm still going to use a smoke stopper as well, but that's always a good indicator. So now all we have to do is just build the little piece here for the camera and then we'll be good to go. So we've got these two pieces over here and the part that has a little hole or a notch, this is going to be the bottom part. And then we've got these little rubber grommets or shims or whatever you want to call it, right? That can accommodate either air units or a regular camera depending on how you want it but the holes are going to be towards the back yeah so they just kind of go inside here and press in like so and then um, you'll be able to use right these uh, screws here on the side and then if you need some extra spacing in between your cameras they do include some little thin little shims like this as well First, I'm gonna attach the standoffs to one side. We've got these smaller standoffs which I'm gonna assume that these four little screws right here are the ones for this one Okay, so we got two done. All right, so we got the camera together. I'm not 100% sold on the way this is set up yet. 
um, and I'm gonna tell you why right now. So what I did is I took the screws that came with this for these standoffs and used those for the camera. I happen to have some of these screws from another build or from some of my other drones. So if you don't, I don't know why this would be your first build ever um, or first drone ever, but if you don't have a M screw set off of Amazon, I highly recommend you get one because you're gonna want them. So I had some shorter screws here that I use for these standoffs because, you know, it's not that thick, it doesn't really matter. And then I used these screws that were for this that came with the AOS kit for the camera. So it's in here. But anyways, it's just gonna go between here, between these two standoffs, nest into the place, and we're good to go. All right, so overall, I think we're pretty much there. I skipped a couple small steps here. So I have inserted the air unit into the TPU mount holder right here. So if you're gonna use this, I would say put the air unit in first and then you can attach it to the bottom here. Uh, I dremeled these bolts a little bit smaller for the flight controller of the stack here so that now everything's going to close. I added the uh, new antenna pieces here that are going to connect. So these are actually perfect. Like I said, these are 70 millimeters, right? So we've got one independent antenna and then that'll fit inside the frame as I come up here to come and close it down. Uh, we've got this is good. And then um, the GPS, okay? The GPS looks great. I printed a test one off last night, but this works even better. So now this is going to slip right over the standoffs right here on the very back. Perfect, just like that. And also it's got a little cutout here. So when I put the GPS in, the wires come out, they go around the side underneath to the GPS uh, mate and then comes back out the side. So I'm gonna show you everything once I get this all finished, set up, buttoned together, and then we'll go into tuning. So we are very loosely put together, but this is looking pretty nice overall, right? I just have these resting inside as far as the antenna mounts here, just to kind of mock everything up, see what it's gonna look like uh, before I zip tie everything down and really commit to everything. But overall, everything looks pretty good. I think we're gonna attach the um, ELRS antennas to the outer arms here, left and right. So it's going to go left and right instead of front to back. The TPU mount here looks pretty nice. Everything like slipping into the backside real nicely here. I'm okay with the power lead coming up right here. I don't know if that's where it was supposed to come up, but it's going to. And um, I just need to get a couple of the other pieces in the top plate to seat a little bit better, like some of these seated automatically, kind of like when we were putting the arms together. So we just need to do that. I'm going to put some final touches and then, and then we're actually going to get to tuning. All right, so let's talk about tuning really quick within beta flight i'm not going to do a how-to because i am not a professional by any means but you could watch a joshua bardo video and that'll walk you right through it okay so set up right calibrate your accelerometer make sure it's nice and flat and all of that good stuff right make sure it's tilting and moving as you do all of that great stuff uh with our ports here okay so we installed the receiver was on channel two so this was already automatically ticked which was fine uh the gps is down here on six okay so you just want to select gps for your sensor input um msp is selected here on uart4 because i'm using a speedy b uh, so it's got a built-in bluetooth connector already so that was already enabled right there okay uh configuration you can come down and do all of this different stuff right here right if you have a barometer which the speedy b1 does you can enable that uh, if you're doing gps click the GPS right here. Uh, for the Maytech M10Q, uh, most things recommend using U-Blocks. And the nice thing about the um, Maytech 10 uh, is that you don't actually need to do any updating, so it's already done. Uh, auto configuration's on, I'm using Galileo. Uh, set home point once, auto detect. Let me double check what that is right there. Um, I think that's when it is. Um, yeah, cool. So this is good right here by itself. Uh, fail safe, right? Go through and check all of this stuff, right? I always have mine set to stage two, okay? And then I also have it set on a switch. Um, this has been different in recent iterations where guard time for stage two was like a couple seconds. That is way too much for me. Okay, so mine's usually down at 0.3 or 0.4. I know this because I have tested a fail safe and my quad drops like 10 feet in an entire second or 15 feet. So I want it way quick to kick on. GPS rescue, all this great stuff. Uh, sanity checks for fail safe only. Although I heard that in this most recent iteration of 4.42, that it has gotten even better. I 
don't know. I'm not going to try it yet, but we're going to see. And one of the other things that's really important here too is depending on how many batteries you're going to be flying. Are you flying just an 18650? Are you flying a 21700? Are you flying dual batteries? So I am have, going to have to test what this hover and throttle speed is going to be just to make sure that this works for the weight that I'm carrying. Something very important to think about with a 7-inch. Now the presets are great. Okay, so presets you don't have to think anymore okay so i uh, will put a link here you could always search it yourself but it's aos presets for betaflight 4.4 here from chris rosser yeah he shows you how to set them but basically if you want to add presets um you can load a source basically uh where is it i don't even know sometimes i forget myself um preset sources right you would come in here you would add a new source right like this one and you're going to copy and paste all the stuff that's in that video right here and then that will give you access to these aos filters right here okay so within them i'll just type it in so you can see so if you type in aos right you'll have all of these different options depending on what kind of aos you're getting right so i took the aos 7 uh, ultralight 7 yes and um, the filters are recommended I selected ELRS 250 Hertz because that's there all of this is in the video I'm just like reiterating exactly what he said and you can apply the preset that's it I did add these filters too but I don't know if I need them or not or how they're benefiting so I added these two um, so and it actually flew a lot better uh, right off of the bat okay so Brandon from the future here so my first basic test flights were with no tune whatsoever it was a little jittery um, but that's about it, right? And then the receiver, come through, make sure all of this stuff is good. If you're doing ELRS, it's going to be crossfire, telemetry is on. Um, and then down here, RC smoothing, he talks about his presets. You may want to up these if you're doing long range cinematic. If you're doing more uh, freestyle quick stuff, you might want the auto factor down. So right now I'm just testing it at 50. Uh, all of your different modes here, arm, angle, GPS rescue, all of that great stuff, whatever your preference is, um, your motors right? You want quad X, right? Motor direction is reverse so that it's props out. Yes. As it goes like this, uh, D shot three or 600, depending on which one you've got. Yes. Bi-directional D shot, all of this great stuff right here. And you'll be good to go. Just watch that video and it'll take you through that. So, uh, that's basically it. And so, um, you know, now it's time to create some more MIDI, some more videos and fly this bad boy. But right now, just some basic testing. It is definitely super light. It's a floater. And I'm surprised how quiet this thing is compared to my Nazgul five inch. I actually think this thing is quieter than my Nazgul is. My Nazgul sounds like a beehive. This thing just has a nice quiet hum. And compared to my Skydio two, way quieter here so yeah so that's a wrap if you love this don't forget to like comment subscribe and all that great stuff and i'm going to have some other bigger wrap-up videos and more uh, updates as i continue to fly this thing right here thanks for watching